Hi okay, guys, welcome back to another video. Today in the workshop we have a 2013 uh, N47 3-series BMW. And what is our problem today? The problem we have today is gearbox sitting there. We have a huge vibration coming through the car which is happening due to a dual mass flywheel after failing. So what we're renewing today is the dual mass flywheel. What I'm doing is fast little video on the self-adjusting clutch that goes in here. Maybe potentially to, how to get it in, how to use a self-adjusting tool for this. And yeah, a fast little spin around or slip around on changing these things. Gearbox is not too hard to take out. I suppose the first thing I'm gonna point out is the starter motor stays in place on the bottom. There's a rank of bolts sitting around the actual gearbox itself. Uh, and the drive shaft on the back, I just take out the six bolts out of the actual drive shaft itself. And that donut, as they call it, shaft will slide slightly back out of your way. Once the donut has gone off, there's no bother. Up the top then, the gear selectors have little pins and stuff that go through them, relatively easy. Uh, a couple of wires going around the box, again, relatively easy. I suppose the one thing I'm going to point out here is on the top of the gearbox, there is a wire that you can't actually see, you'll put your hand up, but it's a very easy one to get out. The actual tab just lifts up with your finger. So if you can get your hand up around, you can lift up that tab and out comes the actual block connector. Now on this car, you can actually see a kind of a mark all the way around. I don't know if you can see it on camera now very well, but you can kind of see the mark down there anyway, can't you? along here. What's happening is, on the narrow case, is that the actual fork of the release bearing is coming out and coming out that far that it's actually touching or hitting off the pressure plate. And you can actually see the different marks inside in the release bearing as well where the actual pressure plate has just left marks in the actual release bearing itself. Okay, just run on the ground here, taking out of the box and all the box fitting over there. We have a new fork comes in the kit, new release bearing, new pressure plate, sorry, new um, dual mass flywheel, new disc. Stated on that, you'll see gearbox sides on most clutches, but just if anyone, a DIYer is doing this. Now, the one little bit is here is we have this little, what would you call it, uh, preloaded tool that's actually sitting into place. And where the problem comes about is if you're actually sitting on your pressure plate onto the flywheel, what you can't actually do very easily is line up the clutch disc into its center point. So you can't get the clutch really lined up correctly with this thing in place. This thing can't come out until we actually have this bolted onto that. And at that point, then, we can work away. I'm going to use a clutch alignment tool today, but what can be done if someone wanted, it's only just a fast pointer for a DIYer, just get super glue and put a little blob here, a blob here, and maybe a blob there. So like three little dots of glue. Okay, once your uh, dual mass flywheel is bolted on, then sit it into a center point position Get it as central as you can. So just look at the area around the edge and just make sure it's lined up as it should do. You can also use the center point in here as a reference just to make sure it's in the right place. Once that glue dries, well then you can sit on your pressure plate and squeeze it together. The tip, the tip I'm going to give for if you've a little tip of glue on it, when you get into the car after the car is put back together and stuff, you can... Once the glue is on it, take out that plate, and then once the car is put back together, you can just get into the car, depress the clutch, and turn the key, or press the button, or whatever it may be in your case. But that actual, with it in gear, actually, there's a good tip. So put it into gear, press the button to start with the clutch depressed, and what will happen is the glue will not be able to hold or overcome the start, or will overcome the adhesion of the little dot of glue if the car is in gear, it's gonna try and move forward because the clutch disc is held in place. It'll just snap that glue and off you go, okay? But as I said, today we're gonna to try and use the clutch alignment tool. I'll um, get off that dual mass flywheel, I'll get the clutch alignment tool out and I'll try and show you what we're gonna do at this point, okay? Okay, 
This is the clutch alignment tool and I was expecting just to pop this open. Never used it before, but I was expecting to pop it open. I actually bought it from a video Mr. Dave Sterl put up about using this clutch alignment, one of these clutch alignment tools. It's an inexpensive one. It's not a very, um, it's not a big fancy manufacturer. I think it's US Pro or something like that. Now, what I thought I was going to do was be able to open, get one of these things and simply make it fit the center of my clutch disc, which would then sit in to that. But lo and behold, I don't have a size here that, that fits that. So that's scrapped. I'm gonna do a U-turn like I would do on many and numerous videos. As I said, this is real life. This is not being done for cameras, just trying to ease or aid some lads in doing this job as well. So I'm back to the only fancy tool I'm using is a little bit of super glue. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're doing it without any um, special tools. We put up the video as, as the one being done with no special tools. We get the disc stuck onto that. Once that dual mass flywheel is fitted in the car, and then we'll pop out that using the big Allen key in the middle of it, okay? Right, so we're back to just disassembling and getting this thing together. I'm going to swap around that. Up here, there's going to be, simple enough, you'll all know that one, two, three, four, five, six bolts around, then we're going to have six bolts or eight bolts, something holding on the dual mass flywheel. We're going to get them swapped and um, bolted on the new one, and then we'll we'll show the little bit of super glue being used and the little center uh, preloaded device gone out of our taken out of it, okay? Remove the pressure plate and the clutch disc. And the first thing I noticed was this bit of a thing fell out of it. We have shards of steel coming out of it. And then I have, you can see a little ball bearing hanging there. So she's well and truly gone on due for renewal. The dual mass flywheel is off. I'm going to take off this little thing. It's the pickup ring for our crankshaft position sensor. Lots of bits of steel around the side. So I'm gonna just give it a clean up before refitting. Easy to not get wrong. You can't get it wrong basically. There's a little dowel hole here by my finger. Goes on there, the actual dual mass flywheel only fits in one position due to this dowel. Uh, give it a clean, we'll bolt on our dual mass flywheel. Okay, uh, dual mass flywheel up on, new bolts put into place. I didn't torque them. People will say, ah, what do you mean you didn't torque them? I didn't torque them. I used my, I don't know, my, my large power tool, 800 pounds per square foot of torque in that. These bolts are not coming out. Again, it's only experience to tell me that. Um, I'm rolling onto this. My change of thought or my change of um, mindset is at this point in time, I'm gonna throw the little two or three little blobs of glue on the disc and then I'm gonna just fit the disc onto that. And at that stage, then I'm gonna re renew my clutch fork and stuff just to leave that adhesive dry. And all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick Three spots, okay? There's one. Oop, we'll go there. Two, three. Maybe I didn't even need as much as that. And then I'm gonna get that disc. We can see here gearbox side, if you can see it. Gearbox side. And I now I'm gonna flip that over. I'm gonna sit it in on that. Oop, sorry, I'm looking at what I'm doing rather than looking at the camera. Now I have to get it right. Okay. From my line of sight, anyway, I'm happy that all the way around we are as we should be. It's a nice little wiggle. And my word, wiggle or woggle. Okay, so the, the gearbox side is sitting at the bottom and that's going to be looking out at the gearbox when this is bolted up and onto the car. That's going to be left dry while I renew this all straightforward. Okay, I've renewed the clutch fork. The clutch fork is the same on both sides if anyone is anyway nosy. This little spring-loaded tab just pulls off to one side. Put a little bit of grease on the pivot pin. I didn't get a new pivot pin and I haven't got that one. That one's not worn. So that's happy enough. And that clip just hangs in there and keeps it sitting in situ. Okay, right, down here again, we have our bit of glue is after drying so I can pull my clutch disc now and it's fairly well caught. It's time for that to be sat up. All I'm gonna do at this point in time, oop, one-handed, I'm gonna just sit that up there. I will need my second hand, so I'm gonna leave it go. But I, I will just sit it up there, sit it on the dowel, sit it on the bolts, squeeze them in, and then I'm gonna pop out that piece in the middle of that, okay? Bolts to win. Okay, pressure plate bolted on, six bolts torqued around the edge with my Milwaukee power tool. And at this point in time, I've nothing to worry about my clutch disc being lined up right because I know it is because I stuck it on with a little touch super glue. And at this point in time, this fork, all I'm using, guys, is it's a, 
a drain sump plug removal kit. I didn't even get an Allen key. Fits in the middle there. Is it like a, what is it, size 14 Allen key will fit it. That's all I'm using. I'm going to try and do this single-handed. It's only very silly. I've only one of the old bolts wedged in there to stop my engine turning anti-clockwise. And now I'm going to give a firm push anti-clockwise and hopefully just pop out straightforward and easy. Okay, there we go. She's out. Our, can't see my head there, but our clutch is lined up in the middle. The only and next task, we're going to throw in the gearbox, which you're not going to want to see on um, camera. Not that you're not going to want to see it, but I'm not doing a tutorial on that. At this point in time, the only problem we're going to have is that our clutch disc is held with that tap of tip, whatever you call it, of super glue, dot of super glue. And the next bit will be me trying to start the car. I'll bolt it together and it'll be me trying to start the car to make this leave go. And I'll show you what I do in that. Okay. A few moments later. The gearbox is bolted in. All the bits and pieces are back up on car. Tray empty. Happy days, every bolt gone. Okay, what are we going to do? This is not a dead set, but I'm going to say that I'm hoping it's going to work, okay? Um, if it doesn't work, we may have to change our thought process. If I put too much super glue, a lot did come out of that little tube. It's not going to damage the disc actually. It's not going to pull a jot out of the disc or any of that. It's actually going to leave go from the nice shiny pressure plate side. So the bit of glue that sat on it is going to just hopefully pull off the pressure plate. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to press my clutch. I'm going to put it into first gear. Maybe we'll put the handbrake seen as there. Don't want the car going too far. I'm actually going to press the brake so I don't really need to, to pull up the handbrake now i'm what i'm expecting at this point in time is that the starter motor is going to have enough power to break the grip on the super glue super glue is only super glue if you put it on a bit of plastic it'll snap in a flash so look i'm hoping that with this in gear don't matter about the handbrake but the brake pedal pressed and we press the key see what happens no she's not able to overcome it okay she's trying to jump my car forward right so we're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start going there now, right? This is... Okay, so the, the super glue is not... Ah, there we go, did we? No, I'm into neutral now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get myself out in a bit of space here so I can get clear run and off we go then again, all right? So I'm just going to have to wiggle and woggle because it, it's not after doing its job. The starter motor wasn't strong enough to leave go at this point in time. But once I get out and get on the road, this thing will leave go, all right? That I can guarantee you. So I'm just going to get a free run so I can go, so I'm not wedged in a corner. Okay. I just pulled out of the garage. I still have my clutch pedal pressed. I'm never going to leave it go, but that was it. Just left go. So I snapped the throttle. There we're out, okay? So just to prove concept so all i done was basically i drove pressed the accelerator with the clutch pedal pressed and the actual engine power to pull the weight of the car was too much for the super glue to hold on so right now we can pop into gear vibration is gone actually which is a good thing but yeah we're we're up and running and and doing our job okay look that's kind of it there's no more to show all i'm basically showing is that the, the aligning of this clutch disc can be done and can be done relatively easy. As ye saw, I got caught with my clutch um, adjusting tool or aligning tool or whatever you want to call it. I didn't have it, so I had to change my frame at all. But on this occasion, all we done, spot a super glue, put it onto the pressure plate so it could sit on the ground and dry while I was putting in the release bearing. And then we bolted the gearbox together. Not that bad of a gearbox, straightforward enough, so no one's going to want a tutorial on that. But uh, on this thing, you saw how to take out that centerpiece, X, Y, and Z as well. But it's done. Happy days. Guys, if any of my hints and tips are any good to you, please like and subscribe. And don't, don't do it if you don't think you can do it. But that's what I have done here on this occasion. And I will probably do it again. Yeah, real garage life is different to books. It doesn't tell you, you know... Uh, you don't give a load of time you have to get in a car get it gone get it out so tarkin maybe uh flywheel bolts with a big power tool something i'll do probably quite often people will go ah i would say uh, and i carry on regard as matthew's 25 or 30 years i never have a problem so i'm not going to have a problem on this equation but anyway for this one guys please like subscribe and I'll talk to you all in the next cartoon peter kennedy signing out see you later guys